Have Harry and Meghan finally lost their titles? Who is Fergie's new friend Derek and what are William and Catherine's plans to honour the Queen? We'll be answering all those questions and more in your favourite royal show. Hello and welcome to Palace Confidential. I'm Joe Elvin and here to discuss the week's big royal stories are The Mail on Sunday's assistant editor Kate Manzi and The Daily Mail's diary editor Richard Eden. Welcome to you both. And a reminder that if you like royal videos featuring the finest experts, make sure you subscribe to our channel and never miss another episode of Palace Confidential. Now, we have lots to talk about today, including the intrigue around the Sussexes' latest Netflix project. So stick around for that. But we'll kick this week off with the news that it will be William and Kate giving, who are given the task of leading the tributes on the first anniversary of the death of Queen Elizabeth. Kate, what do we know? Well, it's been reported that Kate and William will be leading the tributes um, on the anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II's death. Um, and as custom, the king, or in this instance, or the monarch, never normally celebrates, obviously, that date um, or even publicly marks it because it's a very sombre day. Typically, the, the, the late queen would always have it as a private day, and that's what the king's going to do. Mm. And we might see some sort of statement or some sort of message coming out from the king on the eve of the of his accession. Uh, the Queen used to do that. So memorably, the Queen um, gave that kind of February address, didn't she? That statement saying that she it was very much her wish for Camilla to be known as Queen, Queen Consort. And that message came out on the eve of her accession. But on the day of the accession, it's not something that's normally marked by the monarch themselves. Mm. But it will be a kind of a big, you know, a, a point, won't it? The, the end of the first year of the reign, the new reign. Um, and it, it will be on everybody's minds and how we're going to remember the late Queen as well. It's just it's just one of those times where you can't believe how quickly a year mm. has gone. We're already nearly a, a, a year into her not being here. But what do you think, Richard, that this says about the Wales's position in the firm? I mean, it clearly highlights their importance, doesn't it, that everyone's wondering how will William and Catherine mark this anniversary. I mean, to be honest, the whole thing makes me slightly uneasy because I think that the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, was very wise that she just chose to mark her father's death and also her accession in private. Mm. You know, how, how do you want to remember someone's death? You don't want to do it on your own, don't you? Qu quietly, generally. And I think if you start sort of, oh, we're expected to put out statements, you know, you can end up in a position like it was with Meghan's birthday, where people are saying, oh, but last year you put out a statement to mark it. Why are you not doing anything this year? And are you going to do one every year then? That type of thing. But I think, I think, I think you've just hit the nail on, on the problem, though, is that if they do nothing publicly, then that's open to criticism as well. Um, true, it's, it's a difficult one, and obviously mm. because it's the first anniversary, it's significant. So I think everyone would understand that King Charles wants to um, mark it privately, and then if William and Catherine put out some sort of statement or something, but I'd, I'd be surprised if we sort of see them out and about then. I mean, it's, it's a strange one. I mean, everyone will remember how Queen Elizabeth used to stay at Sandringham until early February when it was George VI. Um, the anniversary of his death, um, to just spend that time quietly. So yeah. I think it's a time of reflection more than a time for sort of making a song and dance on social media or whatever. Yeah, I, I imagine that um, there'll be a lot of public markings and, and tributes, won't there? The media will obviously focus on it. Yeah, and it was obviously it was such a, a big event in, in the country's life that we, we want to look back and think of... Um, you know, how the years pass, what's happened since then, that type of mm. thing. So it's history, isn't it? It's, Absolutely. It needs to be marked. And we've, um, we've reported a lot on the memorialisation committee that's been set up by the Cabinet Office, the government. They're talking to the palace about how best to remember the late Queen. Mm. So whether that's a statue, whether that's a special day. Um, so all that's going on behind the scenes. So there is a kind of a big legacy project that will right. come into the fore at some stage as well, which will probably be talked about around you know around that first anniversary I expect. Yeah, I must well, admit I'm still finding it quite hard to adjust to the Queen not not being it's around. It's so strange isn't there was it? One yeah. morning I was having my breakfast and suddenly they announced on the radio and now we're having the national anthem to mark the birthday of Her Majesty the Queen. Uh, uh, what? Yeah. Uh, that was Queen Camilla of course and yeah. <laughs> it took me a while just to twig. It's when the money comes that's when I'll, that'll be a, a, a shock day for everyone I think. We've got the 50p coins haven't we with Charles's head on now yeah. the King's head so these things are 
sort of slowly, slowly coming into general consciousness. It does take a while, I suppose, after such a long reign mm. for us to all to kind of figure out. Mo moving on, I want to talk about the Duchess of York, Kate, who revealed the name of two intimate friends this week. She did indeed. She uh, talked about her friend Derek, her new friend Derek, who is in fact um, her newly constructed breast after her breast cancer operation. Goodness me. And she's given him the name Derek. Interesting, I would have thought it would be a girl. Yeah. But it's left poor Eric feeling like a right boob because that's exactly what he is. The other boob's called Eric, apparently, and Derek is a newly constructed boob. I mean, to say that Fergie's a little kooky is a bit like saying Buckingham Palace is, is quite roomy. Um, but she's, you know, look, she's very clever. She wants to get the message out there about breast cancer. And this was Derek, bless him, was, you know, creating headlines on the BBC and all around the world um, after she gave this news that she called him Derek. Um, so it was uh, one way of getting the message out there that everyone needs to check their breasts. Perfectly fine name for a boob. <laughs> Perfectly fine. I mean, you know, obviously she's... Breast cancer's a, a dreadful ordeal for anyone to go through. She's had her troubles with that. There's always... The problem of Andrew and how you solve that going forward, but it feels like Fergie seems to be in pretty good place. Well, I think this is why people like her because she addresses everything with a, you know, a good sense of humour. Um, she said that she'd named him Derek because it made her laugh, and she's got this kind of. She said it's nice having this kind of armour. She feels like she's got some armour now, some protection against the world, and you know, mm. good for her. I think she's really, she, she's really an interesting character, and, and it's one of the reasons why people do do really love her. Well, you know, all the best to Derek and Eric. I say, I, I, I'll spare you your blushes, Richard. I won't ask you about anyone's breasts <laughs> today, not on camera, but um, it was. Fergie's daughter Beatrice's birthday this week. Yes, Beatrice turned 35 and a um, bit of a milestone, but she's... With a snapper. Um, exactly. And I mean, that's nice timing. I think from what I hear, they've celebrated as a family in terms of there hasn't been anything public apart from sort of amusing social media posts from her sister. Um, but I, I think, um, you know, she's in a pretty good place too as... Um, uh, as you, you said of Fergie, that I think at the moment she's trying to help her mother um, as much as possible as she recuperates. Um, but she has a happy life with her husband, Edo, and thing, things are good really on that front. And mm. I think, as you know, I hope we might see some more of her in the future, really. Indeed. And uh, one of her best friends, cousin Harry, Kate, is off on a mini tour of Asia. Nice segue, yeah. Uh, Harry is. Uh, <laughs> we've seen Harry. He's big in Japan, so he's gotten to Japan for a, a world kind of sport summit. It's ISPS, and he's gone there representing Centre Bali, his charity mm. in Africa, in Lesotho. Um, and he was full of praise. He's on a big charm offensive. Um, he was nice to the media, shock. Um, when he arrived at the airport. <laughs> I know, when I heard that he'd said, oh, I'm really pleased to see you again, I just assumed it was sarcasm, was it not? Yeah. <laughs> well, he has been sarcastic about that sort of thing in the past. Yeah. Um, but no, he does seem to be, he's full of praise for the Japanese culture. He said he's had a lovely um, time there, has been really well looked after. He even suggested that he might like to live there if they would have him. Oh, so I don't me, know, maybe Harry. the US visa is going not very well, I don't know. <laughs> Pick a country and stick with it, Harry. <laughs> Crikey. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely his back on the stage he's letting it be known that he's all about charity that's what he's about it's uh, he's always been about charity and always will be about charity and so that's the message that he's he's taking taking to the world stage okay well, you, think, got, as, you got that message Richard well I think as we speak he's on his way to Singapore so I hope he doesn't that's encounter right. any trouble at the um, border controls you know because they're very hot on um, drug use in Singapore uh, well and I don't think there's any suggestion that Harry's using any drugs no, no but past <laughs> use and I, I, I think um, yeah. you know well, they, they may grill him thoroughly before they um, allow him into the country well that's right he's on his way to Singapore because he's going to be doing this charity polo match again with Centre Bali um, no wife, Megan, and no children with him, but he does have um, the lovely Nacho Figueres, the world famous uh, polo player. They're going to be playing polo together in Singapore, raising loads of money for charity, and um, no doubt we'll have a few more speeches or interviews or things like that well, coming they, from they, Harry to look they forward to. They took a photo week. together, didn't they? Oh, this is um, an amusing picture which Nacho has put on his. Um, Instagram. I mean, it's a fascinating sort of reflection of his um, relationship with Nacho, really, because it believes. Just hungry now. Oh, but be <laughs> <laughs> believe me, if yeah. one of Harry's old mates from from England um, posted a picture, a sort of personal picture with Harry on social media, oh my goodness, there'd be hell to pay. You know, yes, be, it would be a betrayal. Wouldn't yeah, it? it would be yeah. a betrayal. He'd be, you know, off to talk to Oprah Winfrey about it. But um, with Nacho, he's who's become sort of his. 
um, best friend, really. It, it's it's a really interesting relationship that you know he's someone who just used to sort of play polo with occasionally, but in California he seems to have become one of his best friends, and there they are traveling together. I'm very happy that Harry's got a friend. Sometimes yes. I worry. That's <laughs> uh, but it, it, August, as we know, is traditionally very quiet for the royal family. But do you think that that's something that Harry and Meghan are slightly taking advantage of at the moment? Oh, my goodness, yeah. I mean, August, you know, it's the dead month for the royal family when they're on holiday. But it seems to be something that's planned um, for Harry and Meghan far in advance. I mean, we've had not only have we had a string of, you know, announcements and stories about their... Um, you know, show business career, then we've also had these engagements um, that Harry's carrying out. So I think, I think it definitely gives them a chance to sort of present themselves as the alternative royal family during August. Mm. And of course, you've got not just the um, Queen's anniversary in September, but there's always Diana's anniversary at the end of this month as well. And everyone will be looking to see how the brothers interact on that, whether they put out joint st statement I think those days are gone um, but whether what they say in relation to that is always quite interesting I think I, th I think Harry and Meghan are always that. yeah very keen to show you know they're the royal family across the water you know and and this is August is their chance to shine sort of thing so it's definitely um, one to watch well uh, we will be talking about Harry and Meghan a little bit more in a moment but we've heard from the panel let's hear some of your thoughts now we looked at Harry and Meghan's phone calls to young entrepreneurs last week, which were helpfully caught on camera. However, not everyone was convinced, including The Hutch, that sounds cool, doesn't it, who said the funniest thing about their phone call video was that they were supposed to be surprising these people with phone calls, but they were all on camera and had good lighting. How much of a surprise could it have been? Yeah, I, I wanted that. But let's quickly turn to a comment from Ronica, or is it Renika? Sorry, I hope I've got one of those right, who wrote about the news that Prince Andrew will still have a holiday in Balmont all this summer. She said, I'm so pleased that the royal family are not rejecting Prince Andrew from the family. It indicates their compassion. Keeping him out of official and public service, however, is very wise. And you wrote in your hundreds, maybe even thousands, asking for pictures of Richard wearing a kilt. Don't I have all the best ideas around here? No respect, no respect. Marsha B wrote, yes, a thousand times yes to Richard wearing a kilt. Do it before AI beats you to it. Thanks, Marsha. We're still trying to convince him. And we'd welcome your AI images of Richard in Tartan if you can be bothered. <laughs> Natal Gross, meanwhile, had this suggestion. Richard could wear a black watch plaid as he's not Scottish. I mean, to me, that you're not Scottish is just a mere trifling detail. We all want to see Richard Eden modelling every tartan possible with three exclamation marks, so she means it. So do we, Natal. If there are any kilt manufacturers out there that want to send some for our dicky to model, do get in touch. The details are below. <laughs> Richard, resistance is futile. Does this count as some sort of harassment? I'm not, I don't even care. Do you? <laughs> anyway, but, I think um, you'd look lovely in a kilt, Richard. Yeah. Thank you, but I'm, I'm an Englishman, you see. Englishmen can't, can't wear tilts, kilts. Don't be so uptight. Details, details. <laughs> but anyway, Kate, the people in charge of the royal family's website, They've had a busy one, haven't they? What's this story about? Yes, well, this is about how um, Harry and Meghan um, have been bumped down the pecking order when you go to the website. Now they're much lower down. Uh, they're below Princess Alexandra and Duke of Kent because obviously they're not working members of the royal family anymore. So they've been bumped down and references to his and her royal highness have been removed. It's been three years it's taken them to do this on the website. And as a courtier said to me at the palace, um, the wheels turn very slowly in this organization. Um, one might have thought there'd be a better time to do it than August when we've got nothing else to talk about. But, um, but yeah, it, it is a sign that, you know, slowly but surely, they aren't going to be allowed back in. I mean, there's been talk in the past, haven't, hasn't there, about not wanting to poke that particular bear, but is, is, how will they react to this? Is this, they're going to be rages in Montecito, Montecito rather? I mean, goodness knows what they'll, like, surely they can't be surprised by this, I would have thought, because this is something that's always been expected. They're not supposed to use their HRH titles. That was all part of the agreement of Megxit when they left their royal duties. Um, so, but perhaps I think they will be, I mean, Harry has made quite a lot of reference to the fact that he still remains in line to the throne. So I think some of that might might upset him, being bumped wow. down. Yeah, I mean, Richard, I know that you'll be, you probably was quite secretly pleased about this, but it, it, it could 
be perceived as a bit petty? I'm convinced that what it was was they've had some work experience people into the palace over the, <laughs> the summer and they gave them the task of going through the 3,000 pages of the royal website and just changing all those references. So they've all become, it was, you know, His Royal Highness um, Prince Harry is now just, um, Duke, you know, the H. Duke or, or whatever. <laughs> and I'm, I'm convinced it's been some um, task for work experience. But, um, I mean, it's, it's one of those things, isn't it? I mean, personally, I think, you know, this is very minor, this is very trivial, they should be going much further. I mean, what actually matters is that he's still in the line of succession, you know, very senior Prince Harry is. God forbid if something was to happen to the royal family, he would become our king. Um, that should end. He should be removed from the line of succession. And he is still one of those councillors of state that can stand in for the, <coughs> for the king, which obviously is not going to happen in a hurry. So why not remove him? You know, we've already had an act of parliament to allow Princess Anne and Prince Edward to join those councillors of state have another one to remove him. It's ridiculous that if you're doing petty kind of changes to the website, deal, deal with the big things and then um, make, make the big changes that matter. Mm, that's an interesting point. Now, Kate, there's also been a lot of noise, hasn't there, um, about the Sussexes supposedly spending three million pounds on the rights to a book, which they hope to turn into a film. Yes, yeah, so there's this new book, uh, well, there's a book out called uh, Meet Me at the Lake. And there were reports that Harry and Meghan have spent three million pounds on the rights to this book to turn it into some sort of Netflix movie, TV movie or series. Now, it's transpired that Netflix have bought this book um, and that they are going to use Archwell, the Sussex's production company, to produce it, to bring it to the small screen. So they're going to be involved and the author's obviously thrilled that it'll be on the stage. So it's this romantic story, characters called Will and Fern who meet um, at the lake, surprisingly enough. Surely and that that Will name will be changing. I was thinking that because <laughs> Will is the kind of, you know, the kind of very kind of hot love interest in the in the novel. So there's no way that they're going to allow that those Will, names. Will's going to become has, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> surely. <Harry and> Fern. <laughs> you can't yeah. leave it as Will. Yeah. Um, so he will he, he will definitely have his name changed, I'm sure. Um, but there are similarities with the Sussex's story. So one of the characters um, loses her mother in a car accident. The other one has an emotionally unavailable parent. There's some sort of childhood trauma. They overcome it all for love. And um, yeah, so watch this space. I don't know, there's, it doesn't seem that there's an automatic kind of acting role for Megan in this, but you know, who knows? Mm. See how they do it. Interesting, Richard, can you see it happening? Well, I think the key thing to remember is this story was not all that it seemed, genuinely, because uh, when I read that Harry and Meghan had spent three million pounds on, you know, the rights to this film, I thought, really? Have they got that much money? Um, it turned out, no, they didn't. Um, according to the New York Post, it was um, Netflix itself that bought the rights to this, and they've then given... Um, the, as a project, they've given it to Archwell to produce. So if things don't work out with Archwell, they can perfectly well take it back and give it to someone else. You know, right. snow skin off Netflix um, knows. Mm. Um, so that that was uh, one aspect of it, which which wasn't quite the case. And and then I'm I mean, look, we've already had one project that was announced with great fanfare was Megan's um, animated series Pearl. That was we had so much about that. It was officially announced. Well, it never happened. It yeah. was quietly ditched. And I think Netflix have got this difficult game with Harry and Meghan where what they want is the personal stuff. You know, the the series that we saw, um, in, in my opinion, appalling series, but it was great for ratings, did very well for Netflix where they're trashing the royal family, this type of thing. That's what Netflix really want. But they've got to keep Harry and Meghan happy, haven't they? So they say, oh, yes, yes, you can produce this, you can do this. And then are these projects going to happen? You know, it remains, to, remains to be seen. It does feel like last chance saloon, doesn't it, for that Netflix deal, because they've lost loads of other deals. They've lost the Spotify deal. And there are question marks over what their future is as kind of media operators within Hollywood. So I think everyone will be watching this, and there'll be a lot at stake and here with be, this project. Let's be clear. When they announced the Netflix deal, it was very much that Harry and Meghan were going to be producers. Yeah. Um, but they haven't produced anything yet. So. Let, let's see yeah, what happens with this film. Well, I know also uh, in your newsletter this week, and viewers can sign up to that link below if you don't already, you point out an, an interesting link between the author and Archwell. 
Because sometimes I really do feel so cynical in this job, you know. But it turns, no. <laughs> it turns out that the author of this book, Meet Me at the Lake, is uh, Carly Fortune, also just happens to be a client of the same high-powered Hollywood agent as Megan, Ari Emanuel. Um, and so then you're thinking, hmm, so it seems to be certainly he's keeping his various clients happy. You know, we've got lots of positive publicity um, for Harry and Meghan and their production company. And we've got lots of po positive publicity about this author. Um, so from his point of view, whether it ends up being made by Archwell or not, I think the author's um, getting lots of good, useful publicity. I'm sure there'll be lots of book sales as a result as well. I'm sure that's just a complete coincidence. Pure coincidence, surely. Yeah. Mm. Don't you think, yeah, Richard? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not, our Richard's not cynical. No. no. But let's turn again to Princess Beatrice now. She turned 35 this week. And to mark the occasion, here are some of our favourite pictures of her. birthday young young Beatrice from all of us at Palace Confidential my thanks to Kate and Richard and to you for watching please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next week bye bye